Vegas here with Music Marketing TV. Today, we're going to be looking at how to make this inside of Vegas Pro. Yeah, so you saw at the very beginning as well, we started with that clip. We've got these circles that grow and come out. And when they do, Vegas Pro pops up. And then we've got these layers of Vegas Pro that appear underneath it. So let's go ahead and get started. So this takes a total of six video tracks. Then you can go through and add sound. Maybe we'll add a bit of sound at the end. Who knows? So first, we need some solid colors. I chose to go with a white, a red, and this yellowish circle, and I thought they looked pretty cool that way. So I'm going to go over to the media generator, and I'm going to go to solid color. In fact, I'm going to favorite it. I come here so much. Might as well. <laughs> and we're going to bring on our first item the white. I am going to go now to the pan crop tool and we are going to turn on the mask. And in the mask, we're going to choose the circle oval tool and I am going to hold down control and shift while I click. And if you do that, a perfect scale, scalable circle will appear. And we're going to move this somewhere around the center. You might turn on the guides for this. I'm going to change the guide to grid so we could sort of see the center a bit better. And I'm just going to try and get this somewhat in the center. Somewhere around there. Yeah, that's fine. OK, so our first keyframe has been set. I'm going to zoom way in because eight seconds is like way too long. Uh, we really want this to be a rather quick animation. While holding control shift and finding the arrow icon here, right? There's like these rotation ones you got to watch out for, but I'm going to come to this corner one, hold control shift. I'm going to make this really dang tiny, basically as small as you can go, a dot. And then I'm going to come forward some amount in time, probably right here. I'm going to look for that icon again and hold and drag it out. Now you may... Well, I'm still holding down control shift, by the way. We're going to make it bigger than the screen. OK, so now it's bigger than the screen. And if we zoom, we say, hey, that looks pretty good. If we go ahead and hit play here. Now it's too fast, <laughs> a little too fast. We'll go ahead, and slow this down. Yeah, why not? You could, of course, go to taste. I'm going to go ahead and uh, select both these keyframes, hold control and click to add them to your selection. They'll have the little white rectangle in them or the white diamond. And we're going to choose smooth just to clean up the motion a little bit. Yeah, and that looks pretty good. It's pretty snappy. Uh, of course, you could change the distances and, and get it how you want. And I'm also going to go ahead and turn off the grid because we don't need it anymore. Now what we're going to do is we're going to control C with this event selected. And on a new video track above it, and if you need to add a new track, you can hit Control Shift Q and it will add a track. We're going to go ahead and paste it and we want a new copy. That way it's, it's something we can mess with on our own. It'll paste it in. We we'll probably want this a bit closer. I like to look for a frame when the circle is somewhat big. Yeah, that's actually a pretty good entry point right there. We're going to click it and then... In the corner here is the little media icon that allows you to affect the generated media. So we're going to click this. We're going to choose a different color. In this case, uh, we'll go for a similar red color again. Why not? So we'll go ahead and select that. And since this has the same keyframe data, it'll do the same thing. Now, they could be the same speed. I actually went in and I zoom in here. And again, I just hit the pan crop tool to go there. And I went ahead and selected this one and chose this one as fast and this one is slow. And I also adjusted it so that maybe it's a bit quicker. And so it just creates a nice, you know, varying speed. You could have them be the same if you want, I suppose. Yeah. In fact, it might be in this particular case, because this one's a little quicker than my first one. I might make this one a touch slower. That might be too slow. Let's see. Uh, no, actually, that's pretty fine. And then, of course, you guessed it. We're going to copy this and we're going to do it again. Create another video track, put it on top and control V to put it down. And this offset is is pretty fine. The circles a good size. 
And it lets it go again and choose a, another color. This time, maybe a yellow color. And we will move this forward. And on this one, we'll again mess with this. I'm going to choose slow and smooth for the last one. And maybe we'll make this one trail a bit quicker. Yeah, you know, just subtle variations like that. Let's see it. Now, this, this white one actually is too fast. Looking at it now, let's go ahead and make that a little slower. I like that. It looks good. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to add the text now. So these three come in, and you might consider adding some effects to these. A uh, good opportunity, maybe like a drop shadow or something to add some separation. So on this middle one, if we go over to the effects and we look for shadow, if you find the black bar fill, this can offer some interesting options for adding a layer of separation between them. So for example, on this middle one, maybe we bring it in, we will bring down the scale some so that it is pretty dang close. But you see how there's a nice shadow underneath it now? We might bring back this blur a little bit in the scale and the blur here as well. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and save this as a preset. We'll call it lift. I don't know, because it looks lifted. We'll go ahead and save this as a preset. So now we have lift. And then we will go ahead and drag this on as well to the top one. And we will change it to lift. Yeah. Now, if you want to do that, it's up to you. Uh, but I do think it adds a little bit nice of a 3D feel to the animation. All right, we're going to scroll here to when we are completely filled and we are going to add some text that comes in here. So we're going to go to, again, the generate. We're going to go to titles and text. And I'm just going to grab, mm, let's grab this one right here. I think I picked this one on the other one. We're going to call it just Vegas Pro. Maybe we'll keep it all caps. Vegas Pro. It's going to sweep on with its own animation. Let's go ahead and fix the color first, though. So for the colors, what I like to do is change this to HSL. And I'm going to go and click on the background so that we have a similar background. And I'm going to choose a slightly maybe related hue, but pretty close. And I'm just going to move it until we have something that's darker so it stands out a little bit. You could go for, you know, more or less flamboyant than this. Uh, but I think I'll go there first. And the words, they're going to zip across the screen here. Let's really quick pick a different animation, possibly. I think I picked 10 on mine. Yeah, so it'll like fly into place. That's totally fine. Let's get rid of this bottom thing because it's going to throw off the positioning. And while this is here, um, select everything in the text. So hit Control A and then click Arial. But if you hit up down, you see how the text isn't changing. If you close it and then click up down, it will change. Um, so that's a little bit of a hot tip there. We're going to go for this more bolded font. I don't remember what I picked for the other one. Let's see. What did I pick for the first one? Because um, I quite liked the font. I settled on this Bebes Nuevo. Nuevo? Nuevo? I don't know. That's the one I picked. And uh, I made it a bit bigger. So if you want the same look as that one, you can go there. But this time I'm going to run with this Vegas Pro. And I am going to go ahead and go over and let's tighten this up a little bit. Let's make it actually a completely... No, we'll keep the related hue go back to HSL. We'll just make it a bit darker. I think it works better with this yellow color that I've picked here. So it's got a little bit of that yellow in it. And we will follow suit and make this a bit bigger. Let's go for 36. That's pretty big. That looks pretty good. 
Okay, so now that we have this, um, we are going to copy it and put it on another video track on top. Uh, so I'm going to select this one, but you can hit Control Shift Q to add another one. We're going to go ahead and again create another source. Now, once this one comes in, let's find the spot where it's in. Okay, that's pretty solid. We'll have this one start to come in. Now, I know I just said to put it on top, uh, but we're actually, we want this one below it because the idea is it's going to appear behind it as a layer. So we want this one below it. We're going to do the same thing for the last one as well. So right now they match. Uh, the issue is, let's mute this one for a sec so we could see this bottom one. Uh, it has the animation on it. So we're going to click on this. We're going to remove that animation by clicking on the animation and going to none so that it will appear instantly. Now we need to pick a cool color. Now on the other one I went and I spent some time picking some colors. On this one, I'm just going to pick a color. And let's go ahead and now make the effect. So I'm going to unmute this channel so we can see them both. All right, so this is our frame where the text will be. Let's go ahead and move forward a bit so we can keyframe this animation. And let's just move it down and to the right a little bit. How much you want the depth to be is up to you. I'm going to settle for that. I think that looks kind of cool. That's pretty smooth. Let's see how much it connects up with our, our animation. Okay, so we might bring this in a little bit sooner, and we also probably want this keyframe to move a little bit quicker. So I'm going to physically move the keyframe in that case. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to copy this one that we just made, and I'm going to put it on our last track. Again, you might need to make a new track. I'm going to move it to the bottom. I'm going to look for the point where the growth stops on the on this track. And I'm just going back and forth right there is where I want this. So this has come into play. So now this one will show up right after that. So to give this kind of nice effect. And let's go ahead and choose another color for this one. Uh, right now, it's going to be kind of hard to tell. So I don't know. Let's just go for like this pink color to begin. And let's choose, again, the pan crop tool. And there are these keyframes already in place. Hmm. I think I may have had more keyframes than I intended on the previous one. But whatever. I liked how it looked. So we're going to go to this last keyframe by using this advanced and previous keyframe button here. And I'm just going to add a little extra. Find it. Um, let's go ahead and bring the draft up to like full quality so we can see this. Yeah, so we'll have to pick a different color unless we're okay with the red. It's kind of a neat effect because it's really hard to see the red. I'm going to go over this bluish color again. You know what? I am going to change this color as well. And then on the base color, now that we have our colors sort of figured out, we can make a little bit better of a decision about what we want as our base color. That's kind of an interesting concept, having it really closely related to the background so it sort of pops out via the shadow. Mm, it's kind of cool. Uh, I, I think we could pick a different hue. Maybe a just straight jet black would look the best. And then before these come in, let's add a keyframe right here after it stops moving. And we will keyframe the color. And then we are going to go forward in time to where this one comes in and change its color to this like greenish color. You know what? Let's take this and move this out a little bit so the text changes while the backgrounds pop up. Well, I'm going to stop fiddling with it. This is one of those things yeah, I'll take a while and I might even just choose some other color at the end of the day. Maybe a different set of colors is the call here. Usually what I like to do is look at the base color and create a family of colors around it. I have a variety of websites I like to go to uh, to get some inspiration. 
And then I, you know, picked the colors. That's what I did for the first one. But I think this one, I think this actually looks better after seeing it in action. I think this this like shadow thing looks great. Um, and the color change is an interesting idea. So this is our final result. Looks pretty good, pretty smooth. And then this was the original. I'd say I like this one more, actually, than this one. Just maybe it's a combination of the font color and the extra drop shade effect that we did. Let's really quick see about sound. If we add a sound, we'll go to the Vegas Hub, we'll look at the stock media, we'll change it to audio. Let's look at music. Maybe music's the way we need to go. Um, this has sort of a fun vibe, so let's look at fun. Sure, why not? We'll get the wave version. I always constantly accidentally click this again, but they will show up in your Hub Explorer when they're ready to go. Like, look at how many of these fireball things I have. Sure, why not? I'll put it at the top. <laughs> that, that works. <laughs> if you've got any questions, feel free to drop them down in the comments below. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day.